Hey everyone, we are live. I'm sitting here with Hugo Prince. Yes. Hugo Prince. And we're going to be talking about cybersecurity yeah. and how you as an individual can protect yourself as well as protecting your business. So, Terry, first, I always remember to stay closer to the mic. On the on? On the on. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to the Road to the IPO podcast. I'm your host, Hugo Prince. And before we start the podcast today, which is in English, of course, uh, I just want to say thank you to Nicolas Sotomayor uh, from Production Modus Operandi, who's the te technician of the podcast. So if you like the quality of the videos and the audio, you can always contact Nicolas. I'm going to put the, the link of his uh, Facebook page in the description. And also I want to thank you, KBS Network, from the beautiful studio we are, who we are right now here. So I'm going to put the link if you want to rent a studio for your podcast. It's in Longay, of course, so you're from Montreal, Brossard, Longay, you can always contact Kavis Network. So today's podcast is in English, and I have the great, great honor to have Terry Cutler, cybersecurity cyber expert and the creator of the family-based Internet Safety University training program. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Any better, and I couldn't handle it. Hey, <laughs> good. You came back from Bermuda. Yes. How's it, how was it? It was beautiful. Right, yeah? Yeah, so, but I'm sorry to get a lot of hate mail because... I'm posting beautiful vacation looking photos and yeah. people are like, why are you posting this? It's freezing. <laughs> so yeah, it's freezing. It was yeah. very, very nice. I went down there to speak yeah. uh, for two conferences okay. for three hours each day for them. <laughs> but on day one, we spoke about how they can protect their companies yeah. from cyber attacks and how to get started in cybersecurity. And on day two, we spoke about how to protect themselves as individuals and their kids online. Good. So how does it feel coming back to Quebec in this winter? Uh, I want to go back. <laughs> Hey, Terry, uh, for those who don't know you, um, we're also in, on a Facebook Live uh, in your profile. So for those who don't know you, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Terry Cutler. I've, I've been in cybersecurity now for uh, since 2005. Mm -hmm. So I got inspired by watching shows like CSI and 24. I'm like, how does Chloe O'Brien break down the system so fast? <laughs> and um, that's when I found out there was a course called The Certified Ethical Hacker, where okay. you teach you the same techniques that the bad guys used to break in, yeah. except you're using these skills for good. And uh, so armed with this knowledge, it was my duty to share this to, to the community, to the world, um, and to the general public on how to keep safe online from hackers. Yes. So um, then from there, you know, the media started calling me, started getting all these awards, and you know, now I have Internet Safety University, because I couldn't be in 50 places at once, yeah, yeah, so I yeah. took everything from my head into a digital product, which is now has just under 24,000 students from 160 countries in it. Okay. I didn't even know there was 160 <laughs> countries. But you didn't even know. Yeah, I didn't know. So tell me, what did you do before starting uh, start cyber security? What else did you was that the thing you want to do in life? No, so I was always in IT. IT, yeah. So uh, the last big company I worked for was called Novell. Okay. Uh, it was very, very famous in the 90s for netware. and these, It was a competitor to Microsoft at the time. It was a yeah. giant. And uh, obviously, the, the marketing machine of Microsoft, you know, crushed beat it out yeah. and crushed it. And so, uh, but we still see Novell from time to time in governments and hospitals and such. So that's a Montreal-based company? No, it's a Utah-based company. Okay. It's an American company. American. So you used to live in the United States? Yep. So no, I used to, no, I was always here, but I, I was supporting uh, uh, Canadian customers. Okay. So technology, a lot of programming. Was that something as a kid that you want to do? Say, I want to go in that sector. No, I I, I wasn't a big fan of programming. Yeah. But uh, what I used to do as a kid was um, I used to collect and download a lot of we'll say pirated games right back <laughs> okay. in the day when it was oh, uh, your life. that's okay <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore the, the BBS days <laughs> the bulletin board service days okay and um, sometimes they would get a copy of these games and then we'd get access to these cracks that would allow us to bypass the security of these programs so we can play them yeah, yeah. and uh, next you know people in school are asking me how do we how do we crack this or how do we how do we pass this level in a game because I had access to all the yeah, what, yeah. what's called the walkthroughs okay so I became this go-to guy the nerd of the school, yeah. and um, so I, ironically, in my yearbook, yeah. my alias I had the word hacker. Oh wow! Okay. So, but I didn't think at the time that I would be doing that full time. Like, so, what type of game do you have? Like, uh, like a Mario Kart? No, no. Back in the day, it used to be King's Quest. What was that? And and uh, it was a, used to be a company called Sierra. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. you used to have a King's Quest, Police Quest. Okay. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm dating you now, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is all old computer games. So your reason to have those games was because you want to you want to try to win those games. It, it was just for fun. And you yeah, it was just for fun. Just okay. to uh, I mean, some of these cracks were already available online, so we would just download them 
I cracked them. You mean online, so the internet, the internet was there? It was called bulletin board services. So back in the day, yeah. uh, we had no internet the way you, you know it now. Yeah. We used to like dial up into a, into a, a, bu a bunch of modems, yeah. and then from there you'd have access to the other guy's hard drive, which had games and programs, and uh, they're called walkthroughs, which is all the hints to yes. finish a game. Yeah, yeah. So you had access to all this stuff. So when people ask you, uh, can you help me with this game, what was the, f the most uh, favorite one? What was the game they say, I want this game, Terry? Wrestling. Oh uh, yeah? Uh, yeah. WWF. At the time it was WWF. WWF. Wrestling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the biggest one. The Undertaker. Yeah, actually, well, I don't think he was in that one. Huh? It was Ultimate Warrior for sure. Yeah, and the oh, yeah, yeah. What's his name, the, the guy, the, the beautiful guy? Rashford, Sean, Sean, uh, Sean Michaels. Yeah, Sean yeah, Michaels. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that was a very, very popular game at the time. Were you a fan of uh, wrestling? Sure, yeah, 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 I loved it. Yeah. Now my kids are into wrestling and they we, love it. Well, let's say, um, is it, well, we know it's fake, but at the time we were a kid, they say, oh, maybe it's real? I find it looks more fake now than, yeah, yeah? than, than, than back then. Yeah, yeah. So, now yeah, that they, time, they're more careful now. Yeah, that time was a uh, we we did like they fight like there was some fight in that yeah yeah it was like on TV obviously look it looked very uh, very realistic yeah, yes. in the nineties but when you go see it live you're like really it's, <laughs> it's so slow <laughs> <laughs> yeah who was your favorite one oh gosh uh, Randy Macho Man Randy that, Macho Man yeah he yes. was my favorite he had a huge influence on a lot of people yeah. Randy Macho Man yeah he was my favorite I, I didn't have the chance to uh, to watch uh, that time of the WWF. I was, I was more influenced by um, the Austin, the Rock, you know, at that time. Um, yeah, I, I really loved wrestling too, but now it changed a lot. So That's it. I don't recognize kids. anyone. I, like, we played on Xbox yeah. with my kids, and I, I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so, not, do you still hack games now? No, 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 no. Oh. Now it's, uh, so now as an ethical hacker, yeah, ethical you know, hacker. We're, we're more. Uh, you know, we keep we, we take more pride in what we do. Yeah. So we don't cross that line into illegal stuff. And okay, like good. So let's say so when you finish high school, they they, they type you on the on the yearbook when you finish hacker. What does it mean for you at that time, hacker? Was it was it good to be at that time like hacker? What, what pe when did people hear that that the that term. that name? What did what did you think about it? Uh, it was uh, the hacker. The term hacker at the time was finding ways to get around something to get it to work. Yes. That's what it was. It, was it didn't even mean anything malicious at the time. Okay. So now it's, uh, you know, even today if you use the word hacker, it's still deceiving. So there, you got to use the term cyber criminal. Cyber criminal. Yeah. Because as an ethical hacker, if people ask the question, well, what, what, how do we know you're not going to turn on us? Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. get that question all the time. Uh -huh. So I, I, have a, I have a government clearance, federal government clearance. Yes. So we're all vetted. Uh, we're certified every year we take the exam. There's an example yeah. of this stuff, and uh, uh, stay, stay more, uh, yeah, and we try yeah. to uh, you know share our knowledge, and so that's yeah. how we build our credibility. Cred uh, credibility. Yeah. So uh, you know, I sleep well at night. I sleep well at night. night. So now, uh, hacker people when they hear hacker, they say oh, somebody's gonna do bad stuff. Yes. So when you say ethical hacker, and because that's something new for me. And people are like, ethical hacker, what's that? It's like, that's like a, what's that? I, yeah, yeah, well, An ethical lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you good or you're bad? Yeah, that's it. How do you respond? It's, it's a conversation starter. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Yeah, so yeah. when I give my business card out and it's saying in an elevator, certified ethical hacker, like, okay. they start laughing, like, what the heck is it? I'm like, yeah, it's a real title. And uh, it exists. Um, so. so what does an ethical hacker do? Well, we get hired legally yeah. by a company. So say you have a company, you would you would sign uh, documents, contract documents to say you permit me to legally hack your system, find the holes, and tell you how to fix it uh -huh. before the malicious hackers take over. Okay, so you have some ethical stuff that you have to do. You're certified by the government. But Terry, um, let's be honest. For those that listen and watching to the podcast, you took the good way as a hacker. Um, some of the kids will say, yeah, but I like to go a little bit uh, deeper and I like to uh, maybe try to risk some stuff. Uh, why did you, did you go that way? Um, well, the, at the time I didn't have the skill. Yeah. But now what's happening is there's these, there's these new tools that exist yeah. that allow you to automate these hacks. Okay. So what we're seeing right now is a lot of companies are keeping older technology mm -hmm. in place because they can't upgrade. 
For example, I still see a lot of Windows XP. And yeah. people are like, ah, you're lying. I'm like, no, there's a lot of XP because some of the software that controls the door security systems to the company yeah. doesn't run on Windows 7 or later. So they're stuck with Windows XP that expired like six years ago or seven years ago. Yeah. So they're stuck carrying this stuff. So now, as um, you can download a hacker tool now and say, point it at this company and then boom, you might get in. Okay. So you don't have to have a, you don't have to be sophisticated, you don't have to be skilled to be a hacker because these tools will automate it. These tools are that other hackers did. That's it. Well, I think, for example, the Canada Revenue Agency yes. a couple of years ago, right, there was this whole story about the heart bleed bug. Yeah. This was, a, this was a flaw that existed for 20 years. Okay. Nobody found it until recently. And you cannot just mass update all these systems because you never know what's going to break. Yeah. So a 12 year old was able to get into some, to some stuff. Okay. So a 12 year old, you're like, what the heck does he know? Yeah, because he, he, he went in, looked for the tools available to really have that. That's it. Program. That's it. Um, that's, the same, that's the same tools we use to do our job, by the way. Yeah. But you, for example, you never thought about, I'm going to hack, I'm going to do some criminal stuff. No. You wanted to be ethical. That's Why, it. What was that? Uh, you know, values. Values, yes. Mostly, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, share the knowledge. That's always what I've been about. Education and... So... Um, Plus, I don't want to end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, yes. So, was it... Was that was that a time that when you tell people you're a hacker and they have like a bad impression of you, like, oh no, this guy's he's gonna do something bad? Do you have those kind of people that say sometimes that to you? Sometimes. So I, I said, you know what? Google me. Google you. Okay. So what happens is when uh, you know you have some people that like, um, uh, you know, when you walk the walk, right? right? So they can Google me. There's enough content that's gonna make them change their perception. Yes. Of me. They're gonna say, oh my god, okay, this guy's on television. He's on radio. He's doing stuff in India. Yeah. You know, all over the world. So they say, okay, you know what? He's got something to risk, right? I, I, I keep my reputation, reputation. very close to yes. yeah. So I, I try not to get involved in anything that's going to tarnish that. Yeah. So. What can you say to every kid, every kid or some, somebody else that it, it's interesting in that stuff and he, he doesn't know what the ethical hacker is right. and he just want to have fun. Yeah. What well, you can say to them, look, don't go that way. You can do hack. But don't go that way. What can you say to I can, I can tell you there's one, there's one perception that the kids think. Mm -hmm. is that, oh yeah, I'm going to hack a big company and then I'm going to get a job. <laughs> I'm like, you're not going to get a job. Yeah, okay. you know? So you got to really, to build your name, it takes more than just skill to make a name in this industry. Yeah. So in cybersecurity, we're 3 million personnel short worldwide okay. in our field. Like There's not enough hackers to protect everybody. Yeah. Uh, ethical hackers, I should say, or cybersecurity experts. Yes. So you know, my, the fast way to to get in, in, into this industry and, and make a name for yourself is to basically obviously study yeah. and then share what you've learned. Learn to make videos, right? People think that, uh, oh, I need to buy a high-end camera to do all your stuff, but as you're seeing, you know, we're getting great quality on an iPhone. iPhone, yeah, with you know, a phone. Everything you need is in your pocket. Okay. So start sharing your knowledge and uh, people are gonna notice and they're gonna start calling you up. Can you go to school and learn about hacking? Uh, there is. Cyber security? Yeah, so I, so I finished high school yeah. and then uh, I tried to go to college okay. and I, I took a programming course in C++. I hated it. Computer Ugh, programming at Dalton so College. Yeah. yeah, I dropped out. You dropped out? Yeah, oh, yeah. so I've never, I've never been to college, I never went to university. Okay. And, uh, but I did specialized training. So I wanted to learn like Novell networking at the time and now it's ethical hacking and now it's the offensive security technology or technology that allows me to hack back hackers legally. These are all specialized courses that you Where can take you after. Do that? The online, online, or you can go to the U.S. There's, there's courses all over the place that have it. So because we uh, we were talking in another podcast with Christopher that you have the chance to meet uh, fast, and he was saying that a lot of big companies are not interested on on a university university diploma. So right. you come like I grew up at college, I'm a hacker, but I don't have any diploma. You think that can people do that? Yeah. So I'm actually running into this issue now. Yeah. So when I work with law enforcement or you know they want to bring me in yeah they're saying oh we need a deck in cybersecurity yeah i'm like why <laughs> they're like why? yeah but it'll take you three years it'll be done yeah. i'm like in three years i'll be obsolete when i get out I mean, hey, stuff hey, changes so fast yeah. there's no way that you're gonna keep up to date by yeah. taking a, a three-year curriculum yeah no offense to the schools right yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh you know and schools even today in, in, in uh public schools they're you're, you're learning from a book yeah. that's already outdated the future is not going to be classroom. It's going to be online learning from, from experts. Yes. 
So that's your fastest way to fast track yourself. You're modeling an expert. So like you said, you got a lot of videos. We go to the website at terrycutlet.com. Right. There's a lot of videos there, uh, but the big problem, and you say before uh, off camera, is that uh, nobody watches your videos. Even if they're six minutes, six, five minutes, yeah. they don't take the time. Why is that? They, they, they don't want to be educated? Or, uh, I, a lot of times I find is that um, cybersecurity is very complex. Yeah. So I do my very best to simplify it. Yes. But a lot of times, most of the times, people are like, ah, I'm small fish. Who's gonna want to hack me? I don't. Mm -hmm. I have nothing of value. Yeah, yeah. And they don't watch the video, for example. And then they call me up months later. I've been hacked. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Like I showed you this stuff in my video for free, <laughs> and now it's costing you thousands of dollars yeah. for me and my team to come in and clean up this the cyber attack. But, but what, but it's not only about uh, about this kind of stuff. But why do you think people don't want to take the time to educate this? Uh, they rather be entertained, yeah. right? So they want to watch, uh, you know music clips or things like that. That's that's where the we see the TV. The, the TV stuff. But you say in the beginning that it was because of watching T V those uh, those T V shows that, that interest you in yeah. cyber security. Yeah. It could be a great thing too. It can be. Yeah. Yeah. So like now uh, like at the time obviously if you look at twenty four yeah. like the way they do the hacking yeah. it's obviously not real. But if you look at Mr. Robot, yeah, yeah. it's all real. Mr. Robot. Yeah. So the hacks, you know, there's people from our community that actually contribute the methods to do the real hack as realistic as possible. That's a TV show. Yeah, Mr. Robot. So, so it's a story about this IT guy yeah. who's an IT guy by day, but a, but a hacker evangelist by night. Okay. And he goes after bad guys and and you know turns their lives upside down. Okay. Like that. It's a TV show. Oh, good. So, if if they take the time to really educate themselves and to really um, to go and watch the videos, for example, they're gonna learn what. They're gonna learn a couple of things. They're gonna to learn to avoid getting scammed and hacked. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Um, I was on vacation last year in the Dominican Republic, and I must have received, no joke, maybe 111 emails. How did this guy know my password? Mm -hmm. So it's like you're, you're you're getting this email saying, "Hey, Hugo, you don't know me, but your password is this, and it's your real password." Yeah. Like, How on earth did this guy get my coat, my my password? It's because there's other websites that you that you, you're a member of, like LinkedIn or Marriott and whatever. Those guys got hacked. Those guys, yes. Yes, so because your password is not strong, they were able to decode your password. And because you have an email associated to that password, they're emailing you saying, hey, this is your password. And you're like freaking out. So uh, when I, I do it, by the way, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that do it. They have the same password for every account. Is yeah. that a good thing? Yes and no. Yes and so no. there's if you make it strong enough, yeah. it's going to help. But you need to have another step called two-factor authentication yeah. or two-step verification. So first thing you got to do is create an, a, a password that's at least 16 to 25 characters long. Right? Like, I know you're thinking, like, this guy nuts. Like, how do you remember a password? <laughs> yeah, how do you remember that? So if you can think of song lyrics or phrases, for example, and don't use this password because about a million people has it. <laughs> If you think of a phrase like, I had a great day at work 2019 exclamation point. Well, that's not Okay? Yeah, yeah. It's a phrase. Uh -huh. Very, very simple. Capital or just simple? Like, now we'll just start simple. <laughs> I had a great day at work 2019. You're like, oh yeah, that's easy to remember. Remove the spacing, uh -huh. capitalize each letter of the word, uh -huh. then that password alone will take you 10 years to crack. And so because we're on this podcast, we want to make your you know, cybersecurity even better. You want to replace the O's with a zero, yeah. the A's with that symbol, and that password will take 39 centuries to crack. Oh wow! Until you know, until like unless I hacked into a server, then I, there's ways, there's techniques now that allows me to take this information without ever knowing your password and sign sign in. Yes. So the attack is called pass the hash. Now I'm not talking about the good old college days here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so this is an attack where we take this information, pass it to a server, and it's going to lock me in as you without ever knowing your password. Okay. And that's why you need to turn on this two-step verification which is an additional option which exists on all your social media. Yeah, with your phone and yes. everything. The numbers, the exactly. one that makes measures text and then exactly. you Exactly. So yeah. a password, so you get into your username, your password, and then a text message will come to your phone with a random message. And with a random, sorry, random code. Yeah. And you're gonna enter that code and then, so even if I guessed your password, I can't get in without that text message. Yeah, you have to get on the phone. Yeah. Um, so let's go back a little bit. You create a long password, I have a great name, walk in 2019. You put capitals, you put numbers, yeah. and that, we wake up in 
to have like a one, two, three. Oh my God. Yeah. The, the people do one, two, they three. They do, they do. I, I see one, two, three, or <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six usually. Uh, and I see password. Yeah. Or, or password? Password. Oh, yeah. It's a password. Yeah, oh I do. <laughs> and they're, they're going to, because a lot of people are like, oh, they'll never guess password. It's so simple. <laughs> they'll, they'll think, no, it can't be possible. But it, it honestly, got a password like that takes us maybe 90 seconds to crack it. It's, it's how really did you track it for real? How did you well, we have software. It allows software. us to to uh, to attack. Let's call, let's call it dictionary yeah. attacks. We have a dictionary with millions of passwords in it, oh, yeah. or another one called Rainbow Tables. But it allows us to cr attack this password list. And uh, if your password is a part of our list, we'll crack it right away. So there is a book with a lot of passwords, yeah, and is. it can be random phrases and everything. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Every and it can be like the normal walls. Yep. Yeah, uppercase, lowercase symbols. How long is that book? How, how many pages? It's not. It's not an actual book. Uh -huh. It's it's a it's a file. File. So, yeah. So so the file has millions of passwords in it. And you go through all of that. The software does it automatically. Okay, okay. So people are thinking, oh, he's gonna guess my password one by one. <laughs> but it's not true. We we have, we have a software that goes and cracks it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can go to bed, wake up the next morning, and boom, there's your password. So they, like in the movies when they just see it going in. Like, yeah. And yeah. You start seeing all the stuff going yeah, across. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's what that is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you have any? Uh, Nicholas, in your case, any easy passwords that you need to shame? <laughs> no, I just invented a word. You look, you look like you're sweating there, like, oh my god, I don't even know my password. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, for my password, I just invented a word. That's fine. As long as it's long enough. Yeah, it's uh, 10 letters uh, yeah. and numbers, but I, I invented a word. That's something fine. I knew, something I knew, that's and okay. But as long as you now, now you need to run that two step verification, yeah, make sure that's turned on. Yeah, it's two step verification. And what about because uh, I well what yeah, about okay. the iPhone the face the face the face that's fine yeah but this is for your phone okay but on 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 Facebook and such you have what's called login restrictions yeah so if so, so I see a lot of people getting their Facebook accounts hacked because they don't realize that you can actually go into your settings under security there's an option called login restrictions and that that actually restricts other devices from logging in. So this way, if somebody guesses your account, your password, they can't get in unless you get a notification saying you allow this device. Yeah, yeah, you get a login and then you see oh, some somewhere in India, like oh my god, that's what right. is that? So you say no, it's not me. Exactly, and that's uh, your that's your cue to change your password. Yeah, so I have a Mac and I have an iPhone. And sometimes when I sign up, my, uh, Apple gives you like a random number for a password. Is that good? Should I should I try that and save it? You can. But the problem is, is that if you're ever away from your computer, yeah, you're not gonna remember that password. Yeah, that's the problem. But uh, there's no like I have to be, I have to save it. Yes. But if I'm if I'm not in my computer, if I have another account, yeah, let's say I'm going to a Microsoft software, yeah, and I'm connected to Facebook. If I don't remember that password, I'm done. You're done. So <laughs> I, I mean, a perfect example. Whenever I, I go on vacation, so I like to go to Cuba because. Yeah. Not only because of the weather and all that stuff, but okay. because the internet doesn't work there properly, <laughs> right? So they're, they're, they have this really crappy computer lab, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you want to check your email, but there's been times where people will use a, a password um, generator software like LastPass. Yeah, it's a it's a software that generates your passwords for you, and it's, it's like thirty characters. It's like uppercase Z, lower J. Like it makes no sense with the password, yeah, yeah. and uh, they couldn't get access to it. Okay, and they had an emergency. And they couldn't even log in their account. They didn't know their passwords. Uh, they tried to be in another computer. That's it. They, could. they couldn't get in. But so. they, can you do uh, reset my password, send it to my email? Well, the in Cuba it doesn't work very well, it right? Work so uh, it's very, very slow over there. Okay. So now at the time it's like, damn, I wish I knew my password. Though. Yeah. Ever since then, like, you know what? Just learn to create strong passwords. Uh, how do you get to that habit? So then you say, oh, yeah, I have a, so something easy to remember. How long they work, and then you put numbers and you put capitals. And this is something I appreciate everyone does. So you go, because there's so many accounts there, Amazon, Facebook, Google, or whatever. And then what I, I think it's not good, but what I do, I go in my every notes and I write my password there so I remember. So when I, every time I forget, I just go on my check, no, check my phone, check my every notes, check my notes, and then I see the password. Is that a good thing to do? I'm gonna just get hacked. Yeah, if you get hacked, all your stuff is visible. Yeah. And then they get access to all your accounts and they're gonna change the password on you. And usually what happens to recover your account, Microsoft, whoever was gonna ask you, what was your last known password? Yeah. And you're like, oh damn, what was it? 
and your your best you're done. You know. So so it's right. Write it out in a paper. Yeah, or? you gotta cr learn to create strong passwords. Yeah, yeah. Really. So you know you can limit from twenty five different passwords. I mean, like I, like I mentioned earlier, the average person has between thirty and fifty passwords in their head from their ATMs uh, codes, the pin codes, to all these other codes that they require. Yeah. But when you learn to create strong passwords like this, you can limit them down to maybe five. Okay. And just you can reuse them, but um, you gotta make sure you have that two-step turned on, two-step verification. That's the most important so I part. Should, I should never use my birthday. No. And my my mom's birthday. No, and and you want you don't want to use like John one two three because I see a lot of that. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, I gotta change it now. It was John one two three four. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> garbage. So yeah, I see a lot of that. So you said every every account you have, you have a strong password. Yeah, every one of them, yeah. And you remember in your head. Yes. Is there a technique? Yeah. What technique? How can you? How Phrases. Can you, that, you know, I'll, I'll be sitting there, I'm like, oh man, I gotta change my password. What am I gonna use now? And I'm like, oh, a flower pot. I don't have any real flowers in my office. Ah, okay. <laughs> and then mess with that, you know. All right. So how long do you stay with the same password? Um, I've had some passwords that are that are years. Yes. Yeah. So, because they say that every three months, like Facebook sh says, send my message, change your password every three months. Change yeah. your password every it's hard to do because people are going to change it to like John1234, then it'll be for five, because they can't remember all these passwords. Yeah. They can't write them all down. Because if they're not, if not in front of their computer or in front of their book and they're away, they can't get access to it. Okay. So, what I really rely on is a two step. Two step. So, this way, if somebody eventually guesses my password, they're, I'm going to receive a text message on my phone randomly. I'll be like, uh oh. Okay. Somebody's trying to get access. Did it happen to you? Did Not you yet. Have? Knock on wood. Don't no, no, no. try this at home. <laughs> Not <Okay. It's> an <laughs> an ethical hazard. So it never happened like a situation. Not yet. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us? That I'm aware of. That you're aware of. <laughs> can you tell us a situation that really happened to an individual that you can share with us? Like, okay, what happened to him? What was it that he, he got hacked? Um, okay, so I, like, I used to work for a private investigation firm. Yes. So we used to deal with a lot of... Uh, We've had a few individual cases like sextortion. Yeah. So things like um, you know adults are sharing inappropriate videos, right, and um, intimate vo intimate photos and yeah. such, and their account got compromised. Okay. And now their pa now their photos are leaking all over the web. Let me cut this here because that that camera has to. Uh... Oh, not doing because two minutes is your photo. Yeah. So it's just because he can't film like t uh, twenty nine minutes in any cut. But let's let's go uh, when you were talking about the ethical photos and yep. pictures. And do we take a break now, or do you want? Yeah, we're taking a break, like just to. No, si c'est juste à cause que les en Amérique du Nord. Hey, we have questions coming. <laughs> Let me see. Here. En Amérique du Nord, le import permet pas une caméra. What's up, Teresa? <laughs> Sorry about that. Wendell, Sasha, Ken. Hey guys. Lisa. James, and there's only four people watching the podcast. Hey, Terry. What's up, guys? So, if you have any questions, you can always uh, just uh, leave it in the comments. Terry's going to answer all the, all the questions. We're doing a podcast about him, cybersecurity. And by the way, always change your password. Try mm -hmm. to do like something like, have a good day, 2019, and then you can be safe. Be safe. No, John, one, two, three. Don't, don't <laughs> use that. <code. laughs> Now we use John one two three. You have any questions? Oh, is that good? Put it back. Yeah, So you have any questions? Sorry about that. Uh, is it, uh, flip it the other way. No, 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 no. Whoa! It's too plastic. So you have any questions? Uh, remember that you can always just leave it in the comments. Or uh, if not, Ted is gonna answer the que the questions after the live, and you can always go watch the live again. I think you made everybody dizzy when you flipped the camera. Around. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, let's go back to the play. Good. Let's go back where you were talking about. Uh, yeah. The so stuff. yeah. So when I used to work for a private investigation firm, we've had some cases where people would come in and they're victims of sextortion. Okay. It's where they've um, they've sent out inappropriate photos, intimate photos, and now the other person on the other end is sharing them with his friends or yes. his contacts or putting them on, on online yeah. and um, because they're no longer a couple. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so okay. uh, so they're hacking each other's accounts and uh, they're, they're devastated at that point. Like they're really freaking out because now they're business professionals and having this information can really damage their reputation. Yes. 
So what did you do for them? What was because that was out already? Yeah. So that's that's the biggest problem is how do you how do you get that information back? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you post something online, um, it's always obviously too late. Yeah. But say you do post it online, sometimes Google will index that image. Okay. It puts it online, but porn sites are also the term is called crawling. Yeah. Porn sites will pick up that photo, copy it to their site, and next thing you know, the other porn sites are copying it. Now it's replicating at a, at a fast and rate. And it, it, it can be found on the porn site. Yeah, oh yeah. Because now what's happening is they're looking for, they're, they're, they're scanning every image, yes, but they're not looking at the photo to see, oh, is it porn? Uh -huh. No, what it does, it looks for skin tone skin in tone. the image. And if it's enough, it's going gonna, it's gonna to copy it. So first is Google that uh, put it in the index. Yeah. And then like, porn site just go by the... By, by Google it. and then putting on the if website. It was more, yeah, if it, if it was uploaded to a, a website, whatever, Google will find it and, and copy it. So what, what did you say to him? Like, uh, it's too late already. It's already online. So yeah. what did, what's the step? Because you got hacked already. So what the step? What do you uh, So say, in, say, say we're looking at the photo. Uh, sometimes in the photo, it tells you um, where and when the photo was taken yes. and the model of the, of the device. And there's a there's like a serial number of the image, yeah. and sometimes we can reuse that information to see where the source image is, and when we destroy the source image, Google will start removing it from all the sites too, but not the porn sites. Okay. So, so that's another step. That's another step. It, it, it's almost nearly impossible to take stuff off the web now. Mm. So it's really like you know, phones are for phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you got hacked. That's too late. So I just want to understand, I think the audience also wants to understand. I got hacked, picked us out there, it's too late. Uh, we, we can maybe try to be uh, to find the source and everything, but what is the next step, Terry? I got hacked, it's too late, picked us out there, what should I do? Yeah. It's, it's, now it's, how do I handle my reputation after that? Yeah. Because you, your job is to try to help people not to get hacked. When they get hacked and it's too late, what do you advise them? Uh, usually, you know, they're going to work with law enforcement because there's ways to say, say you, you think you know who it is. Yeah. Well, there's ways for us to track these IP addresses if they haven't used like ways to try their tracks called uh, mm -hmm. VPNs. Yeah. And once we get the IP address, <coughs> we can provide this to law enforcement with a court order okay. and they'll be able to find out who, who that person was. And if it's who they, they think it is, then they can send what's called, they can do what's called an Anton Pillar order. It's like a... Uh, an acquisition. So they show up at the guy's house and take his equipment and then you could start going to court against the person, things like that. Okay, so that's it, to find the culprit and try to yeah. uh, go with justice. But that's, uh, but that's like $10,000. That's minimum. a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And, but that's the thing I want to say, like their reputation, they have to work on it. You're never going to give advice up. You know, they, you're just there for, to try to find the culprit and trying to, to help them because they get tapped. Yeah. And after that, you have to deal with it. That's it. They'll work with a PR firm or something like that to okay. minimize the damage. But a lot of times, like, you know, sometimes they may not find the images. You know, they get the, the outside folks. So, but they're always thinking about it when they go to bed. Yeah. You know, the reputation is Did this person see my images? Because now my friends are acting weird. Uh, so yeah. you're always ultra paranoid now. Uh, and that's what I say. Like one guy, one guy was almost suicidal. Okay. And uh, he, he hadn't slept for, for days. And then when he showed up, he was black eye. <laughs> like really bad, like everything was super paranoid. Yeah. So I, I, I got a chance to sit down with him and overlook his device and make sure all, everything's all locked down. And uh, now it's like night and day. Okay. So I felt like a bit like a therapist there. For yeah, 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 you are like a therapist. Because most people that go, go there, they already go hacking. Oh, yeah. They're kind of, I'm done. They're in bad like, shape. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm done. There's, too late, they, I wanna find a culprit, and when they find a culprit, they still have my reputation, so yeah. your job is to have to listen to them. That's it. You, like, you cannot help them with their all the reputation after that, you, you will just, okay. Yeah, we we'll try to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. But usually it's by adding these advanced security measures to uh, protect themselves. I mean, look what happened a couple of years ago with all the celebrities, yeah. right, with the iCloud. Yeah, the iCloud, yeah, yeah. Like, why didn't you just turn on the two-step verification? You would have been fine. And even Apple's like, well, we have, we've had this for years. Why just turn it on? Yeah. So, but people won't think about this until it's too late. That's, that's the problem I'm trying to figure out. It's like, how do I, how do I get this content to you so you guys can absorb it and avoid being like them? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, I just want to make sure, who, who, who does the hack, hacking? Because that case that you just thought was, there were, there were like a, a couple. 
So is it somebody that you know that was that could really happy? Like my girlfriend, she took my phone, she knew my password, so she, we work out, and then she's trying to uh, win my reputation, my mom, whatever. So in most of the cases, is it somebody else, like from India, or somebody you close it's to? It's usually very close. Uh -huh. So it's somebody that, that knows your password, maybe looked over your shoulder as you typed it in, yeah. and um, maybe the, the, the spouse or whatever will make a copy of it to his hard drive or his USB key, and then when they break up, that's when the company will get out. So you told them never share the password with your family and friends? Yeah, always keep that. I mean, there's ways to like, you know, if you're if you're a kid, whatever, you gotta share it with your parents. Yeah. Uh, but uh, usually passwords are, you're supposed to keep to yourself. Do you know the password from your kid's account? I do. Okay. <laughs> and why is that? Because you wanna, you wanna be careful what you consume? Yeah, not just that, it's just that if ever uh, I have to get into the iPad for whatever reason, I, want, I don't wanna be locked out of my own device, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you cannot, cannot uh, get into an iPad, for example, without the code, yeah. right? So that, uh, even if you reset it, whatever, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get access to the stuff. Yeah. So, uh, and then also, if you lock it out, if you if you enter the passcode too many times, it'll actually disable the device, and, yes. and, and, and there's no way to use it. You can't get back in, even Apple can't even unlock it. It's finished, it's, to it's a oh, door yeah? stopper, yep. So you have to be careful to yeah. not uh, do the same password again. Yeah, again. I think it's 10 times, and then you're done. And you can never get, get back your iPad? It's finished. Yeah, it's finished. Like with your wife, do you share your password? Do you make it share like, look, no. this, I know the situation, so I don't want to share with you? Yeah, so we, we keep our passwords separate. Okay, so it, does the audience have to do the same? It all depends on, the, I mean, it's a personal choice. Okay. Yeah. Because you say, most of the people that can hack you is your wife, person that yeah. closer to you, so yeah. if something happens, then they hack you, then they have some pictures and everything. That's it. Yeah. yeah, we uh, no, we have separate passwords, um, but uh, no, we don't uh, we don't share the passwords on that. Right. You know, we've seen cases where, um, uh, you know, obviously, if I have access to your computer, yeah. I can put in a CD-ROM and I can actually blank out your password. I never have to know. I can just erase your password and then get it to your computer. And sometimes we've seen cases where somebody died or somebody's away. Yeah. Here's 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 his laptop. Can you please unlock it? How do you do that? You so. A lot of IT guys will say, oh yeah, this is a five second job. <laughs> but now sometimes when they do that, they don't realize the, the legal ramifications of this. Because what if, okay, even though the person died, what if there was secret bank accounts that he didn't want her to know about? Mm -hmm. You know, what if he was, uh, you know, was what if he was married, now he's turning gay? Oh, you know, dating inside. Yeah, dating inside. You don't know the, the secret life of these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when, when you do that, you know, and, and she goes to court, they're gonna, the first question they're gonna ask, well, how did you get access to this thing? Oh yeah, Johnny at the IT shop helped me out. Well, now he's gonna get subpoenaed, uh, yeah. and he can get into legal trouble. But the person is dead, there's no need. There is, there is still a lot of, uh, because maybe he, maybe he owns a company, and didn't want her access. Yeah, okay, like so she can still, he can still uh, try to That's it, that's it. So right. usually we, you know, they try to uh, let it die with them. So. Just to, uh, just to put everything in context. So I feel like you can also, like you're looking at your phone and trying to, but most of the time now people just log in to their accounts super easily. But if I say I'm, I'm, uh, I'm outside, take my phone and try to log in, should I, should I wash my back to see somebody think somebody's there? You can, but now with, uh, with the newer uh, devices, it's all facial recognition. Yeah. So you just look at it and it unlocks. So let's talk about facial recognition. Facial facial recognition and also uh, yeah, Twitch ID. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And what's the big difference with that? Um, so a lot of people think that oh, Apple's gonna get my my thumbprint now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's not the way it <laughs> <My> works. <face. laughs> you have minutia points uh -huh. on your thumb. There's hundreds of them. I don't I don't don't quote me on this, but there's it only takes a couple, oh. and then that'll unlock your phone as your fingerprint. Uh, so they don't copy your fingerprint. And same for for face for facial those for certain points. But for face, I feel like they can use that for other stuff. I, I I have to. I think there was a lot of testing that came out where if I had a photo of the same person and they, and they tried to make it work, it sometimes unlocked the phone. Yes. So. Oh, like um, what's that? How do you say uh, twins? Yeah. Twins also. There's some cases that the same twin can unlock the other phone. phone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, technology is always evolving. And there's any other ways, uh, uh, touch ID, facial recognition, any other ways to uh, to not drop in your, your phone? 
I mean, there's other uh, there's other technology you can add on to it, which is far more. Uh, like voice me. There's 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 um I haven't seen that for for iPhone or or Samsung, yeah. but obviously the banks use it, right? So if you call in and, and they can verify you by voice. Okay. But uh, these are all extra factors that will eventually be needed. Yeah, because let's not forget that also there's uh, your uh, your pin number. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So when if I get my uh, now nowadays it's PayPal, so it's just that. But if I get hacked with my PIN number, does so that how do I process? Do I have to call my bank? Call the bank right away, yeah. and then they're gonna they're gonna see that maybe there's a fraud or uh, somebody had your card, they'll just deactivate it, and most of the time they'll be funny. Okay. So what do you think about PayPal? Because it's super easily um, for real. In fact, if I take your card and I go and I'm gonna buy some stuff, I can just pay PayPal, PayPal, PayPal. But PayPal. I think there's a limit up to 100 bucks. Yeah, but the 50, I can't remember. But if I don't go up that limit, how can I stop? I just directly call the bank. Call the bank. Yeah, because if you have the app, you'll see the transaction yeah. happen. All right. And then, uh, uh, but you know, the, you know, there's, there's the biggest thing I see with fraud regarding banks is the phishing attacks. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a real story, but we'll anonymize the people. Okay. Uh, I, uh, Contact of mine was frauded four hundred forty thousand dollars from a bank oh, wow. from a phishing attack. Okay. So say the email came in, and you know came from the marketing VP of marketing of the bank. Yeah, yeah. Which is an email saying, hey, you know, great news. We're doing all kinds of wonderful stuff. Update your profile. So he clicks on it. But that was an e the email was uh, uh, was say a bank. It was. Dot com. Yes, it was. Well, so so the PDF looked legit. Legit. Yeah. Okay. So when he clicks on it. He didn't realize it said, you know, name of the bank dot ru. Okay. Russia. Uh -huh. okay. He didn't realize that. <laughs> so he enters his username and password and his two-step verification uh, token. Yeah. The moment he puts it in, he gave that information to the hackers. So now you're thinking, oh, it's his fault. Yeah, yes. But now, so the hackers logged into the to the bank account. Yeah. Was able to do like little mini tests to see what the maximum limit was of the account. Okay. Created a wire transfer to Mexico and wired four hundred forty thousand dollars. Now, this person never wired more than like fifty thousand dollars, and that happened fast. Very fast, within fifteen minutes. So as soon as they got the information, wired the money. In, That's it. They didn't knew that he had money. Probably. Okay, because I just want to say because me, uh, Nicola, somebody else, uh, if I get hacked, uh, whatever, I don't have any money. I can't have Facebook. I change my account, whatever. So, but this guy had money, so they probably knew that he had. Maybe. Money. Or it could be just a random phishing attack that he became the fish. Okay, so they don't know. They don't so exactly. They don't, the, the most of the time, they don't know. And if if they if and when they have the information, oh, he has money, so they yeah. fast. So they so they logged into his account, yeah. and during that fifteen minutes, he's actually locked out of the bank. Right, he can't log in. Okay. For 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 um for for the the time limit of what's called the token, so so he wires the money. The banks never called him to say, are you really wiring this kind of money? Like, you've never done this before. It's a little weird, right? Yeah. Whereas, you know, I get a, I get a, I get a call from the bank when I have a $100 fraud <laughs> at a gas station. Yeah, yeah. And also, he gets fraud at $440,000. He's never wired ever to Mexico. Okay. And the bank manager never stopped it. So whose fault is it? Is it really his who's or the fault? bank? So when the, the bank sees that kind of money, especially high, high body money, and then it never happened. The, there's like there's a person in front of that. Yeah. It, does somebody accept the transaction? No. Or just, it goes just, into the queue and then and then just you know the bank manager just approves all the transfers and. But there's out. a guy approving. There's there's a guy approving it. Okay. And so it went through. And so it's not like a system that goes out. A guy has to push the yeah. button to From accept. From what I understand, it is yeah. The transaction. That's it. They have their account manager. So that okay. So that guy just push it and. So the money arrives in Mexico, yeah. and by the time they tried to recall the money, the money's already long gone. Yeah. Which means somebody on the other end was waiting in the lobby and pulled out four hundred forty thousand dollars. And and uh, to and another bank. Yeah, down there. And nobody saying. Oh, nobody, nobody so far has been arrested, or we have no update. Nobody asked questions. Nobody asked questions. So and who's fault is the, the the client there, the guy or the bank? Or the, the guy who we'll find the out when I go to court. <laughs> to testify. I go to court to testify. Yeah. Okay. And, and, then, you, and then they don't even have they don't even have a system in place where it's like there's ways to, to what's called correlation. Yeah. They see this person usually logs in from Montreal all the time, and now he's logging in from another location. 
that should be a flag. Yes. And also, he's never done these types of behaviors before. That yeah. should be another flag. And, um, you know, and on top of it, you have what's called a, like, it's like the, the token is like a two-step verification yes. token. Yeah. It usually lasts 60 seconds. Like my Xbox is 60 seconds. Every time, every 60 seconds, the code changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even every 30 seconds. This one is 15 minutes. Which means I can't get into my bank account for 15 minutes until that token expires. Yeah, because it's 60 minutes when they send you the text. That's right. Like, it's the time yeah. you don't, this, you have to redo it. That's it. But you, the guy was allowed 15 minutes. Yeah. And That's a default minutes. for That's the bank. That's the part. In, like in your, in your experience, the default is from the bank. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a combination of the two. That's my feeling. I mean, the, yes, the person got fished. Yeah. Didn't have the awareness training, okay. and. Uh, but the banks should have protected the money. Like there was enough flags that, you know, the banks could have done something. But they always show you when you log onto a bank site, there's a huge banner. We are not responsible if you get hit with a phishing attack. Yeah, yeah when you, you, okay, you log in and also when you sign the contract, whatever That's it, it that's it. You have to protect, you, you have to make sure your, your wiring, like the stuff you're wiring is your, your, your real final destination. And, and that's what you're going to do. But I don't understand, Terry, because there's some behavior, behaviors that the guy didn't do, so there's not any red alarm or something like that. There, there, there should have been some at the bank. Okay. There was a bunch of alarms. And, uh, you know, we've seen another case, for example, where the, so the hacker is usually in your system six to 18 months prior to being detected. Yeah. Okay. So in this one specific, specific case of another wire fraud, the hackers were already in the person's company. Okay. They're reading everybody's email. And what they, what they did was when when, the time, when it came time to get funding from a big company, uh, the hackers intercepted the mail saying, hey, you know what? We've been having problems with this bank account. Can you please wire the money to our Hong Kong account? Okay. And they were, they, were, they were creating other fake emails and they were CCing each other to make it even more legit. And they were creating emails like, uh, like you go with H-U-U-G-O at gmail.com. Okay. So you should have been thinking, well, why are you using your Gmail account instead of your corporate email? Yeah, so in that case, the guy, was, it was in a corporate Yeah, place. this was a corporate setting. And, and sure enough, the, uh, they wired the money to, to Hong Kong. Yeah. Money's gone. Okay. Half a million dollars US. Yeah. So uh, now we're talking a little bit about uh, people that have a lot of money. So in case of people like, listen, I don't have any money, I won't get hacked. Uh, and they still get hacked. So when that happened, what does the hacker go in? What, the, what is the information they're trying to get from normal people, they say? Yeah. Credit card, social insurance? Yeah, what, what so identities, they identities. And so I, they're, they're trying to get as much as they can about you so they can resell it on the dark web. Okay, so, to, to do what after? To well, so they can, they, can, they can build credits, credit, uh, they can build your credit profile. So they can start opening bank accounts and, and start uh, taking money from your identity. Like, when do you know that's happened? Well, when usually you, when, when you do a, you're supposed to do a, you should be doing a credit report every year. Okay. okay? A credit report from Equifax or TransUnion is going to show you what accounts you have open okay. and which company. And you might also find out who's looking at your stuff, who's inquiring about it. And the, um, the name of the people. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. they have to. Okay. Well, so if you're applying for a job or, you know, you're applying for something, you're going to do a credit check on you. And that's when they're gonna see, um, you might see who's inquiring about your credit. So credit card, social insurance number, what else? Uh, they're gonna be looking for uh, date of births, uh, passports, information, everything they can use to recreate an identity. For them for, to, exactly. to, to try to, to create a new identity exactly. or just to open your accounts and to spend money there. So when, they, so, so when they create your account or when they get access to your account and sell on the dark web, you're probably only worth five bucks. Yeah. That's how much our identities are worth, like, you know, under, under 10 bucks. How do they price that? By, by volume. Okay. So they'll hack a bank or hack somebody, they'll get millions of accounts, and now it will sell for a dollar a piece. But they never know who has more money than the other? They don't know. So just a try, oh, if I look, look, get lucky, I can have, like, a guy has $1.5 million. They won't know until they, until know. they dig deeper. So they just get, like, a, a bucket full of identities, and then they start looking through it individually. That's where it takes a long time. That's why someone, someone's like, you know, I've never been hacked yet, but maybe they haven't gotten to you yet. Uh, and they don't know. They're still at they're still at E, and you're an H. You know. <laughs> and Nicholas and me, maybe we got hacked. We didn't even know. You don't even know it yet. So All right. That's why. That's why there's no silver bullet to stop a hacker. Uh, you can only make it as hard as for as possible for them to get in. 
So that's why when you have these things like two-step verification or these other types of alerts, you're gonna you're gonna receive these weird messages saying, "Oh, maybe someone's got my account." Yeah, sometimes I get something from India or whatever. So if somebody for real is trying to get me, when I go to my Facebook, somebody for real is trying to get me. You'll, you'll notice thing also regarding Facebook, you might you might get added by somebody you're already connected to. You ever notice that sometimes? No. So say uh, you know say say somebody recreated my account, okay, and they rec they found my photos online, created a Facebook profile, and they added you. Okay. Well, you're gonna say, well, I'm already connected to Terry. Who's this guy? Maybe he. Oh, maybe Terry just cut me off yeah. and he's just trying That's to get back. Yeah. <laughs> so you go and add him. Okay. And then he'll send you a message saying, Hey, Hugo, is this you in the video? Yes, that. And then you that. click on yeah, it, yeah, and then yeah. all of a sudden everybody gets spammed. And then we, and then we click. And I, there's something that now this YouTube video click, and then I'm like, yeah. Well, is it because I'm. I'm getting that mindset to be scary to click on the link. That's it. Especially from people that never sent me a message. They say, hey, I, I, some, some, sometimes people that want to send something to me, but I'm, I'm like, a like, yeah. I, I hear some stories. Oh, somebody sent me a link and then I got hacked. Yeah. So, so do you recommend to never click on any link? You gotta be very careful because I mean, curiosity is gonna kill the cat. Even for my friends, so. It's hard, yeah. So there's ways to, you can you, if if you hover over the link, it's gonna show you where it's really gonna go. And oh, yeah, you click with your uh, yeah. yeah, you know, you don't click on it. You just put your mouse on it. Yeah, yeah. And it's gonna show you. Uh, there's another way you can also with, with your iPhone. You can just hold it. Okay. And it's gonna show you a quick preview. Um, uh, but you're not necessarily click on it. But there's ways for me to, you know, make the preview look legit. But when you click on it, it's gonna go somewhere else. Oh, sure, so it's hard. It's very very hard. As an individual, unless <laughs> you're in this field. It's really, really hard. So as soon as you click and you get in that link, you're done. Yeah, well, if you don't have your software up to date. So if you, like, a lot of people, like we're talking about now, patch management. Yeah. Patch management is where you're gonna make sure your Mac is up to date with the latest patches and fixes and whatever. But a lot of people don't do that. And when you're, when you're using like Adobe Acrobat yeah. Reader that hasn't been updated in months, there's a lot of flaws that exist. So there's fixes that come you up for that. You mean the software of the computer? That's right. Okay, you have to always update. Yes. So when you receive an email and you open it or open the attachment, it's gonna try and attack your applications like your video player, all these apps that might be old. And once it compromises it, it can compromise your computer. Just one app? Just one app. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get hacked. That's right. And uh, so once you're in, I can turn on your webcam, I can take all the stored passwords from your browser. Can, we, can we be watching right now? Maybe. <laughs> I, but there's ways to turn on the camera without the light going. All right, uh, you're getting so, so I put a video, I put a video out called "How to Know If You've Been Hacked in Four Minutes." Uh, you're getting so, I don't know, man. I have but these are all things I deal with. You know, it's uh, on a daily basis. So I have this video that's out, and one of the comments was like, "Oh yeah, I just put tape on my on my camera." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, but I can turn on the microphone, and I can hear what's happening in oh the room." Oh my god! Uh, so wow. Oh, you're getting me really scared right now. So I have to turn on my computer. That's, oh, the, that's, okay. the, that's the thing, it's like, you know, a lot, a lot of times when I give the presentation yeah. live and I show them real facts, like, people think, oh, this hacker is just trying to scare me. But I'm trying to show you what's really out there when you do certain things. Yeah. And people, that's usually the reaction, yeah, I'm like, oh shit, I'm, I'm getting off the internet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so, you can't, because you need to do business. Yeah, you need to stay for personal reasons, business reason. But to be honest, if a normal person gets hacked, I don't think they, they would, because you get paid for this, and you get paid because you work with big business. Yeah. But a normal guy that doesn't have that kind of money, and say, I get hacked, I got hacked, what should I do now? Yeah. So just some uh, easy t tips. You, they, if they want to get an uh, ethical hacker, they could, but if they have money, but they don't, they don't have the money, they That's get right. a Facebook account. That's right. Should they contact Facebook? They won't, have, Facebook won't do anything. Yeah. Right, so they're gonna say, sorry, uh, you're lost, go create a new account. You know, we've had cases where the um, the Facebook account was linked to an old Hotmail account that they don't even have anymore. Yeah. So now they can't even send the recovery code to the Microsoft account because it doesn't even exist. Okay. Now they've lost total control of the account. And now I have to leverage my contacts at Facebook or these other companies to try and help me go behind the scenes and do something for yeah, them. Yeah, but that costs money because they have to pay. Well, some of them, are, some of them are, Luckily for me, I have some friends that work there. Yeah, right. <coughs> for so me, for the person that- They'll never help you. No, okay. They won't do nothing. And if I want help from you, I have to pay you the right amount. Hey, yes and no, I do a lot of stuff for free. Okay, good. But, the, like, again, I put a lot of free content out there, 
but I have a course that I sell that has six hours worth of content in uh -huh. it for like 147 bucks. Uh -huh. So, you know, it'll help you think that avoid ransomware, like, which I'll talk about in a second, yes. how to trick, create strong passwords, you know, how, to, how to lock down your computer like a Mac. Okay. And they're never gonna look at that until it's too late. All right. Like you could have avoided this. Now it's gonna cost you, say, say for example, they have a small business and they get hit with ransomware. So ransomware is the latest form of online extortion. Yes. The email comes in, uh, you open up the attachment and all of your data is locked up. Like imagine you're the, the owner of a company, you, you come into work, nobody can work. I've been to school all the time. time. Yeah. Nobody can work, There's the data is locked, the backups are encrypted, or maybe even destroyed. Yeah. Anything they can do to, for you to pay that ransom. Now, just for us and the team to contain this ransomware, is starting at thirty thousand okay. dollars. Wow. So if you have a small business, sixty percent of small businesses will go out of business when if they're hit with a ransomware. Wow. And a lot of people are like, why? How, how would they target me? They don't. I have no money. I have no nothing. We don't do nothing. Uh -huh. And they don't care, right? The moment you get hit with ransom, if you value your data, you're gonna pay or you're gonna try and restore. Yeah. So before we go to to the business side, it's a personal guy and a normal person could have nothing I can do. Then you just open another Facebook account. That's it. That's it. But what I can do is try to limit and try to prevent that. That's it. That's it from uh, anything from you and somebody else trying to do two, uh, two step verification, yeah. uh, trying to do a strong password. Yeah. And also, uh, if I go with a um, uh, computer, I will log out. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Kind of those easy stuff. Avoid those computers. <laughs> avoid those computers. Avoid, avoid the public computers for right. sure. Well, there's ways for us to install what's called a key logger. So if I go to the library, I use the computer. I can yeah, well, I was looking at Concordia a couple of years ago. Right, it was in the news. Yeah. They, they installed key loggers on the computer that allowed people to capture what you were typing in for your user on the account. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's a software that actually captures what you're typing, and if you're logging into a banking site or your Facebook site, it's going to get your password in clear text. It's emailing it to the guy or sending it to the guy in, in real time. So I'm probably not also a public computer. Yeah, computers. definitely, and public Wi-Fi too. Right. All right, that's a nice stuff. Yeah. Because you log in on a public Wi-Fi, you can easily get your information. Well, there's ways for me. Like, I have, I have a device. Okay, one that's, it's called a Wi-Fi Pineapple. Yeah. It's a funny name, but it, it allows me to create a fake Wi-Fi access point. Terry's Fast Wi-Fi. <laughs> and it's open. Okay. So it's free. People are like, oh, yeah, I need Fast Wi-Fi. They're going to connect to me. And they don't realize that I, I might be able to capture their passwords. Because now I'm the man in the middle. So before you talk to the internet, you're going to come through me first. And I'm gonna try and capture what I can, and whatever I can decode, if I capture your password, I'll be able to log into your accounts. Okay, because you're the one creating managing them. But exactly. I connect it to Starbucks. Yeah. Just, just, just go. What's up? Uh, anyone in the live now? It's gonna say hi to those people. Are we out of time? Are we out of time? No, it's just the. the hey, the Travis. Okay. Ah. So, in the de import. Patricia. Daniel. Tim. Natalie. My God. It's just an affair to import today. Thank you for being on the live. Any question you have, you can always uh, just ask, uh, put it in the comments and. Ted is going to answer them after we talk about security, cyber security, uh, change your password, and then we're going to go a little bit more about business stuff. We already talked for an hour. Yeah. You talk a lot, man. I'm trying <laughs> to get the flow. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. All right, so, so let's say if I can, um, I'm connected to the Starbucks, right? Yes. I could copy shops, yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Can I get that? Yeah. There's ways. So there's ways for me to, the term, the term is called poisoning. Yeah. So what will happen is, is that I'll have a software on my computer that, that's going to that's gonna try and talk to your computer and say, you know what, I'm the router, I'm the router, router I'm the router. And it's going to keep doing that to you okay. until you eventually say, yep, he's the router. And now you're going to come through me to go back to the Starbucks Wi-Fi. But Starbucks doesn't know? No, they won't have systems in place. They, they just provide you the internet. Oh, when, when, have, when you accept your... Uh, yeah, you, uh, you're at your own risk. Yeah. Yeah, it's a public Wi-Fi. So can somebody on the, on the Starbucks sitting out there can, with the computer can hack everyone? That's sure. That. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's why there's an option on your phone called the personal hotspot. Okay? So it, it, so it acts, so your phone becomes the Wi-Fi. So what happens, you connect your computer to your phone yeah. with the code yeah, yes, yes. and you surf out. So this, this way it's way more protected. You're, you're much safer that way. When you're on that uh, plan. But they say you have to spend money with that and everything. So people just go with the public word. That's right, exactly. But they don't understand the risks. 
Okay, so yeah. avoid public Wi-Fi, avoid, avoid uh, public computers. Yeah, unless you're installing, okay, the, the, if you're going to go public Wi-Fi, yeah. there's, a, there's an application you can, you can install called the VPN, VPN, which anonymizes your traffic. So you're connected to the free Wi-Fi, but you can know another software that's going to like hide your tracks while you're connected. Okay. So it's going to keep you safer. Right. But a lot of times you have so, to, to, so, to download that. Yeah. Like, oh. So if you have the latest, let's say Kaspersky Total Security or or Norton Total Security, whatever it's called, uh, it sometimes comes with that in there. All but right. there's a limit. So say you're only allowed to surf for uh, you know, for thirty minutes of time, then I can say upgrade. So you have to use that, those three apps for that. Yeah. Okay. Because let's when I when I have my Mac and I have computers, but I, for me it seems like any. Cell phones don't have those antivirus stuff. Right. Then when you go on your computer, you just to go to Microsoft, you download your antivirus. But now cell phones, you don't download an uh, antivirus app. How does it protect itself? They do. They so so, so like the like the the Samsungs have them. Okay, but you have to download it. You have to download and install them. Yeah. But if you don't know, you just keep. Yeah. So so with Apple, for example, Apple is very secure. Yeah. And what they do is they um, they use what's called sandboxing technology. So. Say you're using this one app, well, only that app can work. It won't talk to other apps, okay. usually, unless you authorize them. So this way, if a virus comes through, it can't talk to the operating system files. Okay, because it's the app is not protected. Yeah, but on Samsung, for example, there's ways for us to get access to the entire phone. And uh, especially if you're in a spying situation where the spouse installed an application on your phone, yeah. they can get access to your camera, turn it on whenever they want, listen to what's happening in the room, read your email, look at your text messages, browse your photos, all remotely. Okay. Like it's, it's pretty creepy. So, um, Apple is way more secure. Yeah, they, have, they have already installed that on the phones and computers. Exactly. But for like, Samsung and somebody that has a LG and everything, yeah. you can, can download some apps. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously the biggest factor or the weakest chain, yeah. the weakest link in the chain is always the human. Okay. So if you can trick the human in doing something not supposed to, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna infect the device. You're gonna uh, there's gonna be a problem. Yeah, because we uh, we're probably going to uh, the second part of the podcast. I just want to know where people can reach reach out to you, Terry. Uh, what's your website? Um, what's your web? What what platform are you on so people can? I wanna I wanna work with this guy. I just wanna learn from him. Sure. What is it? So you can go to uh, www.terrycutler.com. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, that's my blog. And at the very top, you're going to have access to all my social media channels. They're all listed there. Okay. And uh, I'm on every platform as much as possible. Not everyone, but. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I, I do have the training for called Internet Safety University for the individual and small business. Yes. And I also offer services where I can audit your, your environment to make sure it's protected against uh, threats. And so, so you also have a program that people can buy? And everything? That's right, yeah. Call it internet, you, can, you can actually go to www.internetsafetyuniversity.com. Yeah. Just, uh, there. And that will, you know, there's actually a free video series, by the way. You get 45 minutes of free content. Yeah. So I'll give you some of my best. And then if you want to upgrade, you have a choice. Because I'm looking at the, on the website right now, and yeah, we can uh, put your email and yeah. name. And, exactly. And that will email you a video uh, every day. Yeah. And, uh, or free uh, free tips, all okay. that stuff there. And you can also get a call with you. You can schedule a call on your website. Yeah. Yeah, so I can do a, I can do a, a thirty minute free consultation depending on what it is, but but I I, I pre uh, I pre screen you, okay. right? So you're gonna, you're gonna tell me why you want to talk to me. Yes. Sir. And if I feel that it's, that's uh, it's not a good fit, I'll decline the invitation. Perfect. So we're gonna put all the links on the description of this podcast. And we were talking about Equifax and Trans TransUnion. You say you have to check out your credit score every every year, but you say oh the, it happens to people, but it does happen to business. We're talking about banks, and just recently, I think almost two years ago, Equifax got hacked. That's Equifax. right. Hack. So what we can do, Terry? Even nobody's business, safe. <laughs> yeah, nobody's safe. Even big businesses get hacked. That's so it. what's the problem, especially with what happened with Equifax? Well, these guys had very, very poor cybersecurity yes, to begin with, right? Yeah. As the evidence came out, even our cybersecurity guys were like, "Wait a second, the the person in charge of cybersecurity only has a music degree." <laughs> like what? Like that can't be possible. And like, there's a lot of mistakes that happen in there. And so, yeah, they have a degree, but we talk in the beginning, uh, the degree is not that important, but it's the skills you have. That's it. Yeah, okay, so the guy just didn't know that much. It was very, very, very poor security. Okay. And what, what angers me the most is that, okay, all of our data got out, right? Or yeah. a lot of, mostly American, but 
they said, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna put you on fraud protection, yeah. right? The the anti theft uh, protection. But it just so happens that the company that they put you on, they own. Yeah. So now they're making money off the fraud. Yes. Yeah. So you know it, it's 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 not right. Yeah, it's still, it's still it's like, yeah. They still use anti Yeah. They I think how long have they been doing this? Oh, many 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 years. So they have like, it's a brand. So especially. Yeah. Canada is Equifax transmitted. We cannot go anyone else in there, anyone yeah. else. Yeah, so it, there's no choice. It, it, both you have, you're done. And That's they it. create other companies to get you That's to it. get more money. So, they're t so the hackers are taking, the, or the cyber criminals are taking that data from Equifax, selling it on the dark web, and they're going to use that to build identities. Okay. I mean, they have the vault. That is the, the purest form of identity information you can have. They got everything they need to rebuild somebody's identity. So what happened with Equifax? What well, were the the consequences that they had? They there was no consequences. Was, like like people should have went to jail or whatever. And there was even there was even some people that, that sold stock uh, <laughs> because they found yeah, out they, they sold they, stock. The CEO, I think, some some yeah. people in the board of Yeah, I'm not sure if he went to jail though. I can't remember. But whatever, I was, I was not yeah, happy with that. It, that happened. This, we still need to have consequences. Somebody has. The, the system wasn't good. They hired somebody that wasn't great. So who whose fault is that? There, the, you know, we don't have enough strong laws here mm -hmm. that uh, in Canada to to uh, address that. Okay, and that's that's a problem we're trying to fix. Now we're trying to get away from the social insurance number yeah. as your identity. We need to find other ways to validate. Like uh, like like. Mm -hmm. Oh, it could be it could be eventually voice. It could be fingerprint, facial recognition. Blockchain. Technology. I haven't played too much about it. You know, I actually took uh, I took a, a seminar on the blockchain thing, the whole Bitcoin thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I, don't, I just don't get it. You don't get it? And I think the blockchain got hacked also uh, recently too. Yeah, I did. Twice. I, I, I know. But I know that blockchain, uh, for the little knowledge I have is way more secure. They have like have keys and everything. They have like blocks of chains. It's way very hard to. Uh, Could be. I, I, when, I, when, I, when I tried to understand the presentation, I'm like, maybe I'm just <laughs> you know, because sometimes like, you know what? It's so simple. Yeah. Like, like people told me, yeah, replace your computer, get a Mac. Uh -huh. So I went cold turkey, got a Mac. Uh -huh. and I'm like, I can't work with this. <laughs> you know, because a lot of my shortcuts don't work, or my all these things, or maybe the app I'm using isn't fully developed like it is on a computer. Yeah. I'm like, I just can't go Mac. Okay. And I went back to computer. I went back to PC. Uh, so it, it does take time to understand. It does. Yeah. Uh, are you going maybe to try to see blockchain something? Eventually. Like when I uh, when I catch up on sleep, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so you say we should replace social security numbers with uh, maybe other technologies. Yeah. Um, and go back to Equifax. Um, you think there's a new opportunity for any other business to just take take over the, the place? Then um, we're gonna bring a new solution. Do you think that Equifax should wash out and say, oh, maybe there's somebody else that's gonna take our businesses, or they still have them on the pedestal? And, Nobody's gonna happen to we got No, I think uh, I think you're taking things a bit more seriously yeah. now. But at the same time, you know, if, if they get hacked again, that's okay, we'll we'll put my identity that protection, make money on them after. Yeah, but someday somebody's gonna take it over your place and see that. Could be. Yeah. And that's what happens with both businesses. You know, you, 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 you show up there and here's a here's a proposal for a two thousand dollar audit or a ten thousand dollar audit. Yeah. They're gonna see the quote and say, I don't need this. I, I'd rather, you know, this my old system. Yeah, just, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I'm a bank, nothing happens. Yeah, I'm a big bank. Yeah, we, we are secure. So they just don't invest in, in audits from outside folks because yeah. they believe that uh, uh, that they're they're fully secure. Yeah. Or a lot of times they'll, they'll this, I love this one. I have an IT guy. He'll take care of it for me. <laughs> yeah. So so when I when I think about IT guys, think of them as your family doctor, okay. your general physician. Would you ask your family doctor to perform laser eye surgery on you? No, he doesn't have the skills for it. That's I it. You go and see an specialist. That's right. Yeah. So that's where the cybersecurity experts come in and compliment him. Okay. Right? We're not there to make him look like a fool. We're there to show him here's here's what you didn't think outside the box on. Because if a hack if a hacker gets in or a ransomware gets in, your data is going to be locked up if you don't do this. So the companies that you want to just try to approach, they never go hack. They the first thing that we see, it won't happen to us. It won't happen to us. We have an IT guy, so that's one of the well, that's the objections you have. Yeah. That's right. That's what's the biggest one. The biggest one. Yeah. We, we won't. It won't happen to yeah. us. So, so what I try to do is I can show them. Here's a sample report of some of the stuff I can do for you. Yes. 
And if your IT guy isn't providing you this information, you need to ask him for it or think twice. So we did always show them what we can provide as a value. And a lot of times they'll they'll say, you know what, I don't need it, but then they'll call me up when something urgent happens. Yes. So, you know, it's cocky to say, you know, pay me now or pay me later. Uh -huh. But you know, it's just a matter of when you get attacked, you yes. know? It's not if anymore, it's when. What is what is the situation to get hacked most? What are you? It's mostly, most of the time it's small business. Small business? Oh yeah, for sure, because the hackers know, or cyber criminals know, that you don't have the time, the budget, or the resources to protect yourself. Okay. So the hackers are getting in, and sometimes they're using them as a jump point to attack another company. Oh, because they can't get the info That's from right. any accounts? Yeah, okay. so they're gonna, hide, they're gonna hide their tracks through you, uh -huh. and maybe you're gonna attack a bank, and you don't even know about it. And when the banks do their forensic investigation, they're gonna say, ah, it was Hugo's company that did it. And then they're, they're gonna have the law enforcement come here, uh, lawyers, bailiffs, yeah. take all your stuff. So it, that was the, the weakest channel, all the, the weakest link. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's always usually, again, it's always the humans. The hackers aren't wasting time trying to break through firewalls and get detected when all they have to do is send an email to somebody and have them click on it. So if a small business get hacked, and then because that big companies get hacked, the big co companies gonna is your fault. That's right. They're gonna do a forensic analysis on them. Yeah. That's bad. But usually, yeah, usually it's yeah. just ransomware. The hackers, the cyber criminals, just want to make money, mm -hmm. and they're just gonna mass email the world. And whoever clicked on that file that wasn't supposed to, they, first of all, they, they, they don't even always know what you got hit. Okay. The money just fell out of the sky <laughs> in Bitcoin, right? So they they get paid in Bitcoin, yeah, which yeah. is an untraceable currency. So they just, money money falls out of the sky. And then the question usually comes up, well, how do you know they're gonna give the key to yeah. unlock your data? And, and I love this response from the cyber criminals because, oh yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, we value our reputation. No way. Yeah, so that they actually reply back, because there's ways to communicate with yeah, them. Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 we value our reputation. You know, if, uh, you know, if we didn't give you the key, we wouldn't get paid. And sure enough, you know, we've dealt with some companies that paid the ransom and they got the key. So first of all, the, 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 the small business has to send uh, Bitcoins. That's right. They, so they have to go and buy Bitcoin, spend money that, send it that's to it. them. Yeah. And that's got money that we never like try to, because when you do Bitcoin, there's no, no, uh, no proof, there's nothing. That's right, there's no proof. It's and a lot of times when a small business gets, gets this ransom though, right? Yeah. Because they're gonna, they're, they're gonna get a ransom on their computer saying, you need to pay me in Bitcoin. Most of the people are like, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now <laughs> they gotta, they don't even know what that is, they don't even know how to get it. Yeah. And now when you work, when you work with a cybersecurity firm that does this stuff, it's called incident response, there's ways for us to negotiate the ransom with the attacker. Yes. And uh, sometimes they'll ask for $100,000 US of money, but maybe we can get that down to 20,000. Okay. But it's, uh, so does it does already happen that the, the small business get the back the data? Or they, they do, they yeah, do? oh yeah. So they, so they get the key back yeah. after they paid, and uh, it takes uh, a couple of hours, depending on how much data you have, and, and the files start unencrypt unencrypting. Yeah. But once, once the data is unencrypted, you better take a real backup again because there's no stopping them from hitting you again. And um, you so have to, you have to really uh, next next time you have to try to protect yourself. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta protect yourself right away. The moment, the moment the data is available to you, it's unsecure, un uh, unlocked. Because they could try to get it. That's it. So now you're gonna back it up. But now the bigger problem you're gonna have is that all the computers that were infected are untrustworthy. You have to reinstall every computer. Yeah. So when you get with a ransomware, the average downtime is 100 hours. Like nobody can work for 100 hours. Okay. So if you have a staff of 50 people, uh -huh. imagine 50 people can't work for a minimum 100 hours. That's like four days, five days? Yeah, and you know, I've worked with accounting firms that got hit and they ended up paying the everybody's late fees because they were late filing everybody. Mm, so wow. the, the money goes very fast. And it, that's mean that you can do out of business. Oh yeah, most actually 60% of small businesses mm -hmm. that get hit with a ransomware that can't afford to pay it or get their data back, they, they have no, they can't work, they're done. So what, uh, what, what they can do, uh, Terry, a small business, what are the, the protections that they need to get? The first thing you need to do is get an audit. Uh -huh. Okay, that's step one, because how do you know what to do if you didn't know what you did? Okay. Right, so uh, there's an audit that I can offer that starts even under a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's equivalent to you know you have that family relative that never wants to see his doctor because <laughs> everything's always fine. Yeah. Well, it's a doctor saying, you know what? Let me just take your blood and let me just show you 
what's happening. Yeah, let me just try. That's it. Okay. So that's the thousand dollar audit, okay. and it shows you at a glance. You know, some machines are all green, some of them are bright red, and there's problems. But it doesn't tell you what to do. It just shows you here's here's the problem. Now we have to investigate more. Yeah. And I my most expensive audit is two thousand bucks for that. Okay. And it provides the full detailed report for your IT guys to go in and fix the whole thing up. Yes. So and some other bonuses, but you know they that that's my best seller right now. The the, the audits. Anything else that you can do? So that's credentials, like anything, like any like a human being, they have to make its own password. They have to uh, because that they share with a lot of employees. So. Some, unfortunately, they do. I know. So there's a couple of things. Obviously, one of them is a culture mindset. Yeah. Because a lot of companies are protecting their their networks that they protect their home, mm -hmm. right? So when you go shopping for a, for a new door at home, you didn't think about oh yeah, this door is going to be very secure. No, you bought your door because it looks nice, like yeah. the neighbors, but it's not secure. So most companies are spending all their money on new firewalls, encryption, antivirus. Yes. But hackers are getting past this stuff yeah. easily now. But now, once they get past this, they have no technology in place that detects this. And that's where all the money should be spent. Okay, so they spend innovation, new technology. That's it. Yeah, but the other challenge we have now with that is when you when you invest in these new technologies, now you need to have trained staff. So what what new technologies there is? Well, one's called a SIM, a Security Information Event Log Management System. Okay. So this thing talks to all of your pieces in your network, your firewalls, your servers, and it brings all the logs to a centralized location, and it shows you in a dashboard what's happening. Okay. But if there's an incident that happens. You have to have the skills to understand what just happened. You have to train the staff. That's it. And usually when you, when you start bringing a technology like this, you have to have a dedicated guy because there's a lot of events that happen. Okay. So your generalist IT guy won't understand this. Mm -hmm. And now you have to invest in training. training. And even if, even if I gave away my training for free, yeah. so say, say instead of $147, it's free. That's a six-hour course. But now all of your staff have to stop working for six hours my training yes that costs money even that's if I money. gave it for free yeah it costs money because you have to stop doing the job that's it and it's, it's still pay it's the training pay. you have that's to pay them for the training yeah and that's why a lot of small businesses don't invest that's and it I think the same solution you say for small businesses can apply to big businesses of course yeah, yeah but in sure. a large scale yeah. yes and, see. and there's ways for us now to uh, to do these um, these fishing campaigns yeah. so we purposely send emails to the employees and see who clicks on it. Let's find all the clickers. And so, so they can even put a rule in place that says, you know, if you've clicked on this three times, we're gonna lock your account, you gotta go take a training or go see HR. Okay. Or we can fire you if you get tricked three times. Because if, you, if, you, if you're the victim, or sorry, if you're the guy who clicks on this, you're, you're gonna affect the company. So you do trainings, like you train, you train them before this is what happened, and if they get caught like three times, then okay, this is your fault, we thank you for this. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, before we finish the podcast, I just want to talk about them. Um, what that was happening here in Quebec, the job uh, then. They say they go ahead, they say a number, and then later on they say no, the number is bigger. Yeah. And um, what's going to happen to the reputation? Uh, this is something like I, I even think that nobody remembers now. Oh yeah, they got that. Uh, yeah. So the first number they gave, I think, was like 1.6 million accounts. Yeah. And I, I, I right away the moment I heard that, I'm like, you know what? The, 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 when the hackers get in, yeah, yeah. they're not cherry picking accounts. Yeah. They're taking the whole thing. So I knew right away that number was going to be higher, and that thing didn't come out until months later. Okay. And now it's like, oh yeah, it was 4.2 million. That's like the whole company. The whole company. So you know they're they're going to get fined. And most people are probably just going to leave them. So they're going to lose a lot of business. Okay. And uh, I don't even know if they could go out of business. I have no idea. But, but it's mostly business because normal people, and to the point that they never see your training, I think that it's not enough pain for them exactly. to get this, that installed. If it was a pain, they would change bank account, they would from digital land to TD, they, they would lend the stuff. I think it's just they don't feel the pain. Uh, that's the problem. So, so whenever I deal with somebody who just got hacked, yeah. All of a sudden, now they're advocates. They're sharing <laughs> all my content every day. I'm like, wait a second, where'd you come from? You know? <laughs> and uh, that's what they're doing. It, 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 to your point, it, it, they won't take action until something bad happens. Yes, it's, like, it's exactly like insurance, right? I don't need this. I'm not. I'm not going to die anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you never know. Never know. 
So it's, it's really insurance. It's like selling insurance. Let's finish uh, with the Jardin. Uh, that was not an hexagon hack. It was an in it was inside, inside. Yeah. An inside. So how do you deal with that? Just to finish up. Okay. So that's very that's very difficult. Then I get an audit. May have found this out, but one guy had too much access. Yeah. Right. So he was able to get access to things like full date of birth. And if he's a marketing guy, why does he need the year? He was, he was a marketing guy. Apparently he was a marketing guy, yeah, from what, I, from what I heard. Don't quote me on this, but, so he had access to the full date of birth as an example. But if he's doing marketing campaigns, you know, he can just put the, the day in the month. Yes, you don't need all the information. You don't need the whole information. So he was able to trick other employees, apparently, to get access to all their stuff, okay. and he was able to piece together all the data. Okay, so how do you find that? Do you, is, is that before you hire him, you have to check out? You have to look at what he did before. Well, obviously, yeah, we do background, we, you know, we always do background checks, right? You can hire a PI firm to do background check. But uh, usually, it's, you got to see who's got access to what. And uh, there are technologies that, uh, that would say, you know what, if he's copying the whole database, the software should stop him okay. and send an email to the IT department and even cut his access off saying, this guy's account got blocked because of this action. Yeah. And that's where he could have stepped in. But that's not that they didn't put that in until it's too late. So you, you have to check out who has access yeah. to it. Yeah. You have to do background checks. That's it. But even then, some people don't have the ethical. So they, one day they can be nice, and next day that's they it. Bad. Exactly, because they're underpaid, overworked. They, you know, they're upset with management. You, the the squad of employees are the hardest to detect. Mm -hmm. They really are. And you know, again, nobody wants it until it's too late. There's so much to talk. You didn't even talk about the AI and stuff because that's something that's gonna help. Well, think about AI for a second, right? So AI. That's what we need right now to help us weed out what's going on. But imagine going, you know, hey Siri, go hack that company. <laughs> you know, imagine, imagine that. That could now. happen. It could happen. You never know. Like it depends on who made the AI. Oh wow! All right. So that's another topic for another podcast. <laughs> right? Questions, Nicola. No, 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 no. Right. Question. Nobody has questions. Question. Oh, there's somebody who says something. Uh, can you read for us? On the Facebook Live, somebody has Sorry about that. Uh, your next owner should be on using mastering portrait mode. <laughs> That's a funny that thing. Up up, uh, just uh, no, the, yeah. Oh, is everybody watching this sideways now? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Just, uh, just what, what does she say? No, it's not a really question is just a comment. A comment. All right, it should be in portrait mode. Yeah. Well, I'll find a way to edit the video. Maybe it should be in portrait mode. I don't know. It's my first live in years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do I don't do much live. I should be doing it. But. Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you for those that watch the live on Terry's phone. Thank you for those that watch and listen to the podcast. Thank you, Nicola, for being there. Thank you, Terry. I'm gonna invite you to to go on our podcast because there's a lot of stuff to talk. Yeah. And if something big happens. You're gonna be on the podcast to talk about it. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Love it. Everybody at home, you good? Give me a thumbs up if you're still on. I can't see how many numbers are on there. Maybe zero. I'm not sure. Uh, Everybody went home and unplugged their internet. He <laughs> 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 <You> scared me. It's gonna make a call about. Where are we doing? Okay, good. We're gonna take a picture. Yeah. And then we um, we move on. To the next one. Thanks, guys. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you for being there. Appreciate it.